Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be joined by the fantastic Louis Tan, currently starring in your new favorite movie, Mortal Kombat. And I know that when they first offered you the role that um, you had a meeting with Simon McCoy and you hadn't fully signed on yet. And one of the details that he shared with you was actually giving you the opportunity to listen to some of the music composition that had been scored already. And that that was a real turning point in understanding the tone of the entire movie and how he wanted to approach it so cinematically. Yeah. And and so then when you were developing Cole as a character, how did having heard that music really help you with understanding who you wanted Cole to be? Yeah, music is so influential to me um, in, in my life and in my work. And, um, you know, I like to find songs and find albums that feel like the character. Um, often you can, you shoot scenes out of order or, 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 maybe something happened in the morning and, and, you know, your emotions are at a different place, uh, but music can take you back so fast. And um, not only can it take you back so fast, it's, it has this kind of, um, I don't know how to explain it, almost spiritual kind of a connection to, to, you know, everyone in the universe. It's very synchronistic in a way. And I think that um, music has been a huge influence on my life. So the music that I listen to, to for Cole is different than other characters that I've played and and uh the music from from the actual soundtrack too has such a a grand dark you know brutal kind of tone to it that um it's easy to kind of connect to the work and the material when you when you hear that music you know uh so yeah I sometimes often actually have headphones on before I perform and um before I perform the scenes I'll take the headphones out and and put them down. But uh, yeah, it's a big part of my process actually. And I was really interested in the development of Cole's backstory and his history, because a lot of the pivotal details that we learn about him as a character in the film are things that he himself doesn't know yet. So you can't necessarily pull that into his character development, you know, but we have certain details that obviously would influence his emotional fabric greatly. Like the fact that he grew up as an orphan on the South side of Chicago tells you so much about who he is, the type of husband that he wants to be, the type of father that he wants to be. So how did you take the details that were there and really build that into to this really rich backstory for him exactly yeah like like what you said there wasn't a lot to work with but at the same time there was everything to work with because I kind of had the free range to build the character there um truthfully my goal in this performance was just to deliver something vulnerable and grounded and authentic in a world that is so opposite that and you know I'm competing with these iconic characters that everybody already knows, loves, plays, has a has a has a connection with, and they're deeply rooted in 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 the culture. So I'm I'm playing a lead character that is competing with these characters, and at the same time doesn't have any of that to to help me. So I knew I was up, you know, heading into some you know an uphill challenge, and I knew that it was. Um, it was going to be deep waters and it was going to be, you know, something difficult, but I, it's also like, it's challenging and it's great. I think that those are the type of things that I don't get, you know, the opportunity to take that type of challenge. And I was up for it. And especially like as someone who, who, you know, has been an advocate for, you know, diverse people, you know, leads and people of color playing leads and also like authentic martial arts, I couldn't turn it down. I had to take the opportunity. And I think that, even if you fail, you give it your all, you know what I mean? And, um, and I was, I was willing to take that opportunity and take that shot, take that chance, you know? So, yeah, I think to me, it was to deliver a grounded, a vulnerable performance, um, show the human side of, 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 of all these, you know, things. And really the story is just about unity and family. And, um, that's something that anyone can connect to. So, yeah, that was my goal. And that really comes through in your your performance. And we see it in, in tiny interactions where the moment his daughter's made a bracelet and his first instinct is like, put it on me. I want to wear this. You know, I want to have this connection to you. And yeah. I wanted to ask specifically about the moment where you have a fight sequence very early on in the film and your family are right there at your side, because in that particular moment, you're dealing with exactly what you were just mentioning. There's the huge scope of that. There's a lot of stunt work going on. There's a lot of action and a lot of movement, but yet at the same time, you still have to 
ground everything through this is a dad just trying to protect his family and that emotional connectivity of that relationship to him so when you're working on a scene how do you set about the juxtaposition of those two sides together yeah that's a good question um so we shot this film in order chronologically which was very helpful for me um, in my performance because as Cole's experiencing these things I'm also experiencing these things and seeing these characters for the first time I'm dealing with the the pressure the pain the soreness in my body you know how tired I am how beat up I am cuts and bruises on my face half of them are real half of them are fake and it's like so that helped a lot but specifically to the to your question in that scene and it's I've been in that position before fighting in amateur kickboxing matches and fighting in front of crowds. I know how it feels. It feels like life or death. <laughs> and um, I've seen my family on the side of the, you know, in, in, in the corner watching me fight in front row and screaming. And I could hear my mom's voice and I could hear my father's voice. And I know what it feels like. It's emotional. Um, and, uh, you know, fighting in that ring with Ian Streets, who's a real, a real MMA um fighter a real bare knuckle boxer really amazing guy but very tough guy uh and that was the opening of the film and there's in front of 500 extras and this is my the the, my debut you know um of a role of this caliber so there was a lot of pressure and it felt like life or death at the time when i was fighting and then luckily I, I got to work with Matilda Kimber, who is uh, an actress that they found out of thousands of different, you know, uh, young actresses that they auditioned. And she's just, um, you know, some people just have this thing and she has this natural ch charisma and this natural kind of sensitivity. And me and her just kicked it off right away. Um, I took her to a uh, escape room so we could just get to know each other. And um me, her, and Laura, Laura Brent, who plays my wife, um, we escaped out of the room. And uh, after we got out, we barely made it out in time. It was like, there's like two minutes left. And we were like, oh my God, like, is this all right? And the, the, the person that runs the escape room was like, only like 15% of people get out of this room. And I was like, okay, I'm feeling pretty confident about these two. I think that we make a good team. And uh, yeah, so that was a kind of a nice way to break the ice. Uh, but again, it's just um, those real, those, those things that, you know, connect us as human beings besides, you know, all these differences that people see with the color of our skin and where we're from. People feel pain and people, people feel love and people want to protect each other and people need connection and, and people need family. Um, you need those things to survive. It's, it's, you know, it's vital. So those are things that it's easy to connect to. It's also really interesting to see an exploration of a character like Cole, who is a professional MMA fighter and, you know, he may be past the, the best days in his career, but that's been his life. And at the same time, he comes across as someone who's very introverted and observational a lot of times. Um, you know, there's that great kind of meal scene a late, later on when Kano is riling everyone up as he does. And Cole's just sitting there watching everything go by. He doesn't participate in it. He doesn't engage in conflict unless he has to. And so there's that real separation of those two sides of, of him and so I wanted to to ask you about the way in which you wanted to express and explore that juxtaposition of someone who can get in the ring show such strength but then at the same time can also be very introverted and observational and a little bit shy at times yeah I think Marlon Brando had this great quote where he was saying like you got to pick a time to make the audience stop eating their popcorn you know and uh you got to pick a moment for that and it's like, I wanted to deliver a character that was taking in all these, all these, all these other characters, especially Kano and these type of like, you know, he's so brash and loud and they're all really big characters. Um, even though they played them beautifully, they're really big characters. And I wanted to be taking them in the same way that the audience was taking them in, you know what I mean? And kind of like not trusting what this world is and not trusting this yet until the point where my character takes a turn and, and has to show courage and has to be heroic. And I wanted to wait and wait and wait and slow build that, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that that's kind of where I was, where I thought the material needed and, and that's to, in order to respect the other characters and to respect the story, that's kind of what it needed. Um, and I like that about, I like that about, 
this movie because it's his fantasy movie and it you know it's uh if, if you watch the 1995 version um you know it's a it's it's a great version as well and it's a cult classic for a reason but i think we brought a new level of groundedness to it in in many ways um and that was my goal as an actor that was my goal I love what you were just saying about taking it all in as the audience does, because the film very much feels like we're experiencing this entire universe through Cole's perspective. You know, he's coming into this all for the first time. He doesn't know what to anticipate. And so how did you and Simon McCoy really think about that in terms of a lot of the camera placement and a lot of the blocking of scenes so that the audience would have that experience through you? Simon is um, a very unique director in, in a way that he seemed like he's directed like, you know, 20 different movies before where really this was his first film. Um, he's very experienced as a director commercially, but this was his first narrative, long narrative. And um, he was very respectful of the material, very respectful of introducing the other characters and having everybody shine and have their moment where it's like, you know, these fans that love Melina are gonna see Melina and they're gonna be satisfied with her opening. The same with Kano, the same with Sonia. The same with Jax. They all, you know, I feel bad for the guy. He had a really difficult job. That's a, such a difficult job to balance all these characters. At the same time, follow my storyline. At the same time, follow this iconic storyline of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, which roots back hundreds of years before and tie it all together and make everybody happy, you know? So um, he was very composed and very patient and very um, open-minded he asks a lot of questions. He, you know, he never rushes into things and I'm super analytical and, and about my work and about getting things right too. So we had great conversations about it on set, everything. It was just, you know, why would I do this here? And, you know, a lot of the dialogue, um, you know, I feel like I could just say with my eyes and didn't need to say. So I cut out a lot of stuff um, that, not, not not that it was bad dialogue or anything. I just I, I wanted to bring um, a physical kind of presence to it and 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 do it subtly, do it internally, whereas everyone else is just like you know throwing fireballs and uh, literally. And I feel like that was very important to deliver to the performance, um, almost as if you know you could do a spinoff of, of any of these characters and it would be a whole other genre piece, you know. And that's what's cool about it. Like you could do like Jackson and Sonya and make it like an army film and make it super grounded without any powers. You could do a whole spinoff of Cole's story and it's, it'd be different too. And as, as his character arc develops into something else, and hopefully we get to, you know, explore this world more, the Mortal Kombat universe more, then we can, we can raise the stakes. But um, I felt like this is a great place to start um, for the reboot. Yeah. And you were just mentioning Sonia, and I feel like the, the rapport that you have on screen with her as a character really shows the, the warmth and the openness that Cole has to other people. He's someone who's always interested in getting to know people. It's, you know, he, it comes across like he's one of those people where it's like you have to prove him wrong that you're a good person almost. Um, and so what, what are the ways in which you really wanted to lead that into a lot of his first interactions? Because for the majority of the film, he's meeting people for the first time. And so it's really vital for him to have that openness and that curiosity curiosity yeah that's right you know i think that here's the thing so the the film is about this arcana this concept of the arcana which to me is about unlocking your potential um and through the arcana unlocking potential you have to go through a traumatic experience so really what it is is it's the classic hero's journey tale it's the famous you know, uh, journey of the hero and, and going down to, you know, the depths of hell and, and, and achieving something and then coming out of it a new person. And that's kind of what this concept is about. So with Cole, it's like, he knows that he missed something in his life. He knows that there was more to him and to what he was supposed to do. He feels that, but there's nothing in his life that's showing that that's, that's, that's the truth. And that's the, the, the very interesting and beautiful thing about life is, you don't always, you can't always look at your circumstances and think that this is it. You have to be able to see through that and know that there's a bigger, brighter future, you know? And that's so relevant and timely because, you know, everything that's happening now, there's often times where you just read the news and you're like, 
it's all over, baby. Everything's coming to a crash. But at the same time, you have to be hopeful. And Cole is, to me, that hopefulness, you know, he's looking for it in everyone. He's looking for it in all these people that he meets. And he has it for himself, too. But he also has a lot of self-doubt. And so once we, we he finally discovers who he is and where he's from, um, that self-doubt uh, turns into something else, you know, turns into courage. And with all of that as well, was that kind of the main thought process behind how he deals with and processes this information? Because to have someone show up and say, oh, you have this destiny, this is actually who you are, this is what your history is, and you need to come with us and you need to come leave your family behind and do all this training. And then you're seeing people, like you said earlier, literally throwing fireballs. Um, You know, that's a pretty extreme experience for a character to go through. And there's a lot of different ways that you could have played his response to it. Um, But again, it does feel like he still has an open openness because of that hopefulness that you were just talking about so was that the main reason that you chose that dynamic and response for him yeah I think so I think that you know deep down if you asked him during the middle of all this you know this adventure that he's on what he feels about it and I I think that deep down he'd say yeah something about this feels right even though it sounds crazy yeah something about this I feel connected to because he has it in his bloodline. It's in his blood. So it actually uh, subconsciously is something that he can probably and does know that this is this is the right path. Although this is insane, this is the right path. Meeting these people and hearing their stories. And, you know, it's obviously absurd. But yeah, something about this feels right. Um, yeah, that's definitely it. I mean, you know, you have characters like Kano played by Josh Lawson. He did such a beautiful job with his comedic timing and improv. And he's, he's the character that's saying, what the, you know, what, what is this? You know, I don't know if I could swear on this podcast, but he's the one that's just, you know, he's, he's saying what what the audience is thinking, you know, immediately fireballs. Well, what about me? Am I going to get a superpower? Like, like, what is this? Um, Some kind of David Copperfield magic trick, like, you know, and and that's, that, that's always going to be there. So I think that it's good for, to have that counterbalance of Cole um, taking it all in subtly and questioning it, but also being mysteriously intrigued by, by it. You know, he's being sucked in slowly. And then sure enough, he also joins the ranks. But with the comedy of Kano, what's great about Cole is, you know, again, he's kind of like he's hanging back and he's watching all of this go down. But then you really come in with some one liners. You know, there's a moment where Cole is just coming back and going, oh, you, you're telling me you actually have any friends. And it lands really well yeah. because there's like a dryness. <laughs> yeah. And so were you constantly thinking about making sure that you kind of like held his comedy back so that when it does deliver, it really delivers in that way? Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's so subtle because he's, you know, he's not the comedic relief. But when he says something funny, it kind of works. Like when he points out that they spelled the Mortal Kombat wrong, you know, he's like, what is this? Is this a joke? You even spelled it wrong. It's like it's that type of comedy, which it's just it's just a subtle kind of dry sense of humor where he's kind of like, you know, you, you, you can't help but not have a good time when you watch this movie. And I feel like he's probably on that journey too, thinking like, this shit is so crazy, but I can't help it. This is hilarious. You know what I mean? You really got $3 million to give this guy. Um, and I think, um, yeah, that's that's just part of the nice balance that Simon, the writers, and, and all of us created together. You know what I mean? A lot of it was improv. A lot of it was in the script too. And we just kind of found what was working. And it's a hard film tonally to deliver. Um, because there's so much to it and there's so many different personalities. Um, and so it was, it was difficult to balance, but I think we found a nice balance of, of fun and authenticity. Yeah. And it would be remiss not to talk about uh, a lot of the fight sequences and particularly your fight styling throughout the movie, because mm-hmm. it's one of the really exceptional things that you've brought to the performance. And there's such an authenticity because this is something that you've been training your entire life in mixed martial arts. Um, and so it wasn't something where you came in and just trained specifically for the movie. And and I wanted to start by talking about his fighting style at the very beginning of the film, going back to you know that first fight that you were mentioning earlier, because that's really interesting because 
he, you know, like we said before, that that's not him being at the top of his game. His body's probably gone through certain things. He's probably got some lingering injuries from over mm -hmm. the years. And so how did you find where he was going to be really physically adept, but where his weaknesses were going to be in that moment? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, this is something that I've, um, this is my lifestyle. I mean, my film premieres today and in three, two, two and a half hours from now, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the gym. I'll, I'll be sparring in the gym. It's, it's something, you know, that is ingrained into my lifestyle that I really love. And I think that the thing I was trying to do with Cole's, Cole's physical journey, which to me equals his emotional journey. Um, it's the same thing, really. I don't, I don't separate the two. Um, is, uh, you know, he starts off as an MMA fighter, which is mixed martial arts. He's bad at it. And, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's not where he used to be, like, like you were saying. If you watch the fight carefully, um, there was a few more rounds to that fight that didn't make the cut. But if you watch that round that you did see, it's just all aggressive all aggression it, there's no defense there's something missing he's trying so hard to win and he's not thinking like if you if you study the great fighters they'll tell you it's not good to fight angry it's not good to fight with emotion you need to fight you need to you know use your brain this is a chess game and he's not playing chess he's just trying to he's just trying to like force his way to into the winner's circle again because he's trying to linger onto that last little bit that slipping away from him and um, that's the way I wanted to approach it. As the film goes on, you see his style get more and more detailed and more complex and more reserved. And like by the by the time he's you know into the third act of the movie, his fighting style is completely different. It's it's calculated, and that's that's his physical um, arc. You know what I mean? And so um, that's why I think it's important. Not that it's necessary, but it's important for action films like this. It's important for me, I'll say, to perform all my fights. And um, if you know, if anybody has worked with me before, they'll know that I'm obsessed with it to the point where I'll be like, what are they doing on that other set? Is there, is there anybody there? W like, what are they shooting? Okay, so I should be there. Hold, hold on. How, how much longer do I have here? Because I need to go to this set. Because this is like, I need to do this piece, you know? Well, it's just a pickup. It's just a pickup. I don't care if it's a pickup. I need to be there and I need to do it because the performance is like, like I said, I, it's, it's the same as the emotional performance for me. I need to, I need to show the dance. I need to be there and you need to feel the physicality of the character and what he's going through. And um, although I have a lot of respect for the stunt community and my, my, my family's been in that community for years, um, I want to deliver that performance. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, it's crucial to, to big action films. And I think it's rare to see a lead actor do that. And, um, you know, if I can do it, I'll do it. I mean, look, everyone has a stunt double, including the legendary Jackie Chan and these amazing guys. Everyone has a stunt double. You need a stunt double for certain aspects of filmmaking. Um, so, you know, there's some, there's a stunt in this movie where Goro <laughs> hits my character and he flies through like three pillars in that, um, in that shed and he just lands into the floor <laughs> that ain't me you know that's a uh, that's uh, this amazing stunt double i have named gareth hatfield and um it almost knocked him unconscious and he's a tough dude so yeah there's moments for it but um when i'm fighting that has to be me because you need to see the emotion you, you, you need to feel it i wanted to ask you about that scene with gora as well because that's a very different um type of scene and scope of fighting as well, because that's gone from being hand-to-hand -hand combat to really having to think about multiple different heights. Um, and that was one where you then, I believe were fighting someone who was essentially on stilts with boxing pads on sticks at the end of their hands. And, so, and then you also had to do takes without anybody so that there was a clean cut because as much as Simon McCoy was doing everything you know, down to the mi most minute details as in camera effects versus visuals, that's one place where you can't cheat it. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about the choreography and the blocking of that and how that was very different, particularly thinking about, you know, who you're up against and, and the scope of height and space that you needed that fight to take place in. Yeah, that was a tricky one. I've never done anything like that before in my career. So that was, I've never fought like a, anything in CGI before. So that was like immediately something different. Um, 
Yeah, well, we did a lot of rehearsals with two stunt guys, like you said, one on stilts and one underneath him. And um, I would go through the routine of what moves I need to do. And then I would go through the routine of what reactions I need to take because I'm not just hitting, I'm getting hit. And so those hits need to be impactful and those you need to feel those hits and those the pain from those hits need to continue into the rest of the performance. So it's almost like memorizing different sets of things, like memorizing my arms. And at the same time, I'm using weapons that I've, I'm not really familiar with that flip in and out the tonfas. So, so for instance, if I have the tonfa blade up and I need to get it back to the uh, blocking position, I have to remember while I'm getting hit on this side that I need to flip this to the blocking position because in two moves from now I need to block. And so after these two moves, then I'll block. And it, I have to look and check and, you know, sometimes I mess it up and it would be the other way. Then we have to start again. Um, and uh, it was a tiring process. But then um, thankfully I had two great partners that <laughs> were really patient with me and they would just rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And they were tired, man, being on those stilts and, and, and what they were doing was really tiring. So um, it was a lot of rehearsal, a lot of memorization. And then on the day when we were shooting it, it's just like, let it go, let it fly. You know what I mean? Like just, just have fun and let it, let it go and, and bring everything that I've been building up into this movie to that point. And like I said, we shot in order. So that was towards the end of the film. And I was like, okay, now's my chance to like go level 100, you know? I was going to say, it, it always sounds like such a dream to get to shoot in order, except when you're doing something that gets physically harder for your character as the movie goes on. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I prepared for that before I even started the movie. Before I even stepped on set, I was like, I'm going to be sore. I'm going to be beat up. I'm likely going to have some sort of injuries. Hopefully they're not too bad. Um, but I'm going to power through this film and nothing is going to stop me. Nothing. Yeah. Not any injury, not any bit of you know, sleep deprived, tired, nothing is going to stop me from delivering a great performance here. And that I went into the movie with that mentality. Um, and not, not to say that it was easy, but, <laughs> you know, you can't go into the movie thinking, oh, today I'm going to, you know, how glamorous is this going to be? I'm the opposite. Like, like, I don't even like to sit down. I, I, I don't enjoy that process. I think that art, you need to go through this experience when you perform, when, when you have, when you're delivering something artistic to the world, you need to have that experience. You, it shouldn't be easy. If it's easy, it's probably not good. <laughs> I look at the greatest performances, look at Daniel Day-Lewis and Christian Bale and Joaquin Phoenix and, you know, Meryl Streep and look at these people. Like, you know, there's no way that they just had an easy, yeah, okay, it was easy. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I, I go into that with the, the mentality of that, you know, we're going to battle. Yeah. And then lastly, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the evolution of, of stylistic techniques and choreography that you bring in throughout the film, because, you know, whenever you, we learn any new skill set, we start to adopt things from people around us. And, and it feels like in watching the film that you really started to take details from the characters who were training him and teaching him things. And then you adopt some of their techniques and some of their style to add to, to Cole's rep repertoire. Um, and so were you really just paying a lot of, of keen attention to the other actors and the choreography that they were doing? Or was that something that you were able to figure out some of what those specifics were gonna be for him in advance for that evolution? It, th that's a really, I'm glad that you noticed that. Not a lot of, no one's really noticed that yet that I know of, or at least no one's told me. Um, it's a collaboration between Chan Griffin, Anthony Renna, uh, Kyle Gardner, who are the our, our main fight coordinators and, and fight choreographers and stunt coordinator, and myself, which is like, when you see the end of the film and it's, and you see the Hiroyuki and his style of Japanese katana, I wanted you to have hints of that in my performance, you know, hints of that kind of like the stature that the way that he moves his body and the way that he uses his, his kunai, um, you know, that should be part of my DNA a little bit. And I think that if I was unlocking an arcana that was deep inside of my character, some of those physicalities should be unlocked too, right? I should, it shouldn't just be all of a sudden I have powers. Well, how do the powers come out and what do they look like? it should look similar to my heritage. Um, 
So yeah, I'm glad that you noticed that. And I just wanted to add those subtle hints, but then at the same time, he just got them. So I want to be able to grow with it. There was some moves that were like insanely cool. And I was like, ah, I just can't do that yet because he, he just got these, he just got this power. He needs to like, you know, learn how to use it. So, um, yeah, I think that those are really like subtle complexities in the movie. And there's a lot of those if you watch it carefully. And I think that um, it's pretty unique for a film that's based on a, a video game where they rip people's heads off and stuff. And I, <laughs> well, it's such a wonderful character addition to this great historic franchise. And I hope that we get to see many more iterations with Cole. Thank you so much for such a great conversation today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the great questions. And they're very insightful.